Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug and this is another chemistry video. We are continuing our journey through thermodynamics and the first law of thermodynamics, which is basically thermochemistry. In the last video, we learned about Q equals mc delta t and how we can use that to find how much energy is being transferred between one system and another. Well, in this video, we're going to learn how to take that knowledge, how to take Q equals mc delta t and actually calculate the delta H, the change in enthalpy for a chemical reaction or a chemical process. So let's get started. Here's our first example. We have a case where a chemist adds 10.00 grams of calcium chloride to 500.0 milliliters of water at 23.50 uh, degrees Celsius, stirs, and monitors the temperature while the calcium chloride dissolves. When the solute has dissolved completely, the temperature has risen to 27.00 degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy of solution of calcium chloride. Assume the solution has a density of 1.00 grams per milliliter and a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now, there are a couple things we have to do here. The enthalpy of solution is in kilojoules per mole. So we're gonna to have to calculate two things. We're gonna to have to calculate the heat, the kilojoules that are transferred, and we're gonna to have to calculate the moles. Well, let's start by calculating how many joules, the heat. So to do that, we need to use Q equals MC delta T. So we're just gonna plug into this equation here. Now Q is the amount of heat. It doesn't tell us how much is transferred, so we're gonna be solving for Q. Now M, what is the mass of this uh, system here that we're talking about? Well, we have 10 grams of calcium chloride and we have 500 milliliters or, or 500 grams of water if you look at the density here. So it's a total of 510 grams of solution. So we're gonna put 510 grams as our mass. We have to calculate that. You know, the 10 grams of the solute and then the 500 grams of the solvent. Now C, the specific heat, it tells us that the solution has a specific heat of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. We're assuming it's the same as that of water. So we're gonna put that in here for the C. Now the delta T, the temperature has gone up, hasn't it? It's gone from 23.50 up to 27.00 degrees Celsius. So that's a rise of about uh, three and a half, 3.50 degrees Celsius. So when we calculate our Q, we can see that the Q is 7,461 joules. I'm not gonna round off until the very end here, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna maintain those extra numbers in there. 7,461 joules. Now, the next thing that you, that you wanna do is calculate the moles that we're dealing with here. So we have 10.00 grams of calcium chloride, but you wanna find out how many moles that would be. That's a pretty easy calculation if you've gone through this much chemistry. We're just gonna convert that to moles, basically. So on the bottom, we're gonna put grams. On the top, we're gonna to put one mole. And how many grams are in a mole of calcium chloride? Well, it's about 110.98 if you look that up on the periodic table, and grams can cancel top and bottom. When you divide this, we get that there are 0 0.09011 moles of calcium chloride. So we've got the joules, we've got the moles, now we just have to divide and find what this is gonna be equal to in kilojoules per mole. Now, we calculated you know, our joules, 7,461 joules, but we need to do a sign change here. Now, uh, now let's think about why we have to change the sign. When we stuck our thermometer into the water, okay, the water is not actually part of the system. Okay, the calcium chloride, that's the system. I mean, the calcium chloride actually uh, breaks apart into calcium ions and chloride ions. We're actually taking the temperature of the surroundings. So if you look from the 
point of view of the system, it's actually losing the heat. So it's negative 7,461 joules. Now, if that's confusing to you, and it very well could be, there's an easier way to think about that. Okay, just think about it in this in this way. The temperature went up. Okay, it, it, it went from 23.50 degrees to 27 degrees. That's an exothermic reaction, isn't it? Anytime you, the temperature of the surroundings goes up, it gets hotter. That's exothermic. Exothermic is negative. Okay, so just put that negative sign there if that helps you. Okay, we have to do that to make sure that our sign is right on delta H. The moles, we said that would be 0 0.09011 moles. When you divide that, that gets us approximately negative 82,800 joules per mole. And we really like to have this in kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to divide by 1,000 and we get negative 82.8 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's how we uh, can calculate delta H of an actual chemical process here using calorimetry, using, you know, a coffee cup calorimeter if we want to. Now, we've calculated Q in the last video and in this one too, and here we're calculating delta H. Uh, oh, and here's the equation for that, you know, the equation, and we actually have a delta H that we've calculated. Uh, that, that, that's actually pretty neat that we can calculate delta H of a reaction just from this fairly simple uh, activity that we can carry out in a simple uh, high school chemistry lab or college chemistry lab. Now, we've calculated Q, we've calculated delta H. Q is the heat that's transferred for a process, and that's measured in joules. The delta H, on the other hand, that's the actual change in enthalpy for a chemical reaction, and that's in joules per mole, or most commonly kilojoules per mole. And we usually express that as delta H with the little zero up there. Now, we've mentioned this in a previous video, but I'll say it again, it's worth repeating, that little zero or that degree sign represents the fact that we're at standard conditions. And that would be 25 degrees Celsius. If you have a gas, that's at one atmosphere pressure. Anything in solution is at one mole per liter concentration. So Q versus delta H, they're related, and we can convert, and we can calculate one from the other. Now let's try another problem here. Uh, this will be the last problem that we do, but this is a lengthy one. A chemist mixes 30.0 milliliters of 0.5 molar silver nitrate with 30 milliliters of 0.5 molar potassium chloride, stirs, and monitors the temperature while the solutions mix. A white precipitate forms, and the temperature rises from 23 degrees Celsius to 26.80 degrees Celsius. Write the net ionic equation for the reaction and determine the delta H for the reaction in kilojoules per mole. Assume the solution has a density of 1 gram per milliliter and a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So, once again, there's a lot going on here. You know, it's a long problem. We have some things to calculate. Let's do the first thing first. Let's write the net ionic equation, since that's what it asks for first. So let's think about the ions that are swimming around in solution here. We know that we have some silver nitrate that's mentioned up here. So we have silver ions and nitrate ions uh, buzzing around in solution, and we have potassium chloride. So we have potassium ions and chloride ions uh, buzzing around. And as we learned way back in our lesson about net ionic equations, these are going to try to swap partners. And so which of these ions or which of these combinations will make a precipitate, something that's solid, insoluble, and which of those are going to stay swimming around in solution as our spectator ions. Well, hopefully, you can see that silver and chloride make silver chloride, and that's an insoluble chloride. Whereas potassium and nitrate, eh, that's not soluble. So those are the spectator ions. They're not doing anything. On the other hand, the silver ions and the chloride ions will get together to make silver chloride solid. So that's our precipitate, and this is our net ionic equation. So we have that much done. 
Well, let's go on to the next part of this. Let's determine the delta H of the reaction in kilojoules per mole. So we have to find the kilojoules. We have to find the moles. It doesn't matter in which order you do them. Uh, let's find the moles first this time. I think last time we did the, the Q first. Let's do the moles first this time. So we're going to make use of our equation. And, you know, we aren't given uh, grams and such here, but all we're given are the milliliters and the molarity, but we can still find the moles pretty easily. Uh, for silver, we just have to take the number of liters times the molarity. So that's 0.03 liters times 0.5 molar. And when you multiply those, we get that it's 0.015 moles of silver. You know, this silver is a one-to-one -one ratio there. That's AG1 and 3 So, you know, it's just 0.015 moles of silver. For the chloride, we can do the same thing. We can take the 0.030 liters of that solution and multiply it by the 0.5 moles per liter. This is the KCl1, so, you know, the chloride... Uh, number of moles of chloride will be the same as the moles of KCl. So we multiply those by each other and we get the same thing, 0.015 moles of chloride. So how many moles of silver chloride are we going to make? Well, according to the coefficients of the balanced equation, this is a 1 to 1 to 1 mole ratio here. So that means if we have 0.015, 0.015 moles of silver and 0.015 moles of chloride, guess what? We're also going to make 0.015 moles of silver chloride. So that's the mole part of this. Okay, We can just find that using simple solution stoichiometry. I don't know how simple it is, but solution stoichiometry either, either way. Let's find the joules now. Okay, Let's go on to the Q part of this. So we're going to do the Q equals MC delta T. And Q, we're trying to find how many joules are released. So that's our unknown. M is the mass. Do we know the mass of this solution here? Well, we can figure it out. We have 30 milliliters of one substance and 30 milliliters of the other substance, and we're mixing them. So we're assuming that everything adds up. And that's a total of 60 milliliters. And the solution has a density of 1.00 grams per, per milliliter. So if it's 60 milliliters total, you know, 30 plus 30 milliliters is 60 milliliters, that means it's 60 grams. So I have 60 grams here. The specific heat capacity, C, of the solution, it says is 4.18. So that goes in for C. And delta T, the temperature rises from 23.00 degrees Celsius to 26.80 degrees Celsius. So that's a rise of uh, 3.80 degrees Celsius. So that's the delta T. When we multiply these together, we can find out what the Q is. It's 953 joules. So if we want to think about that in terms of the reaction itself, this is an exothermic process, remember, because we're going up in temperature from 23 to 26.8. So it's actually negative 953 joules from the point of view of the actual reaction that's taking place. This is an exothermic process. We can change that to kilojoules and say negative 0.953 uh, kilojoules. Well, now all we have to do is the last part of this, and determine the delta H in kilojoules per mole. So kilojoules per, per mole means kilojoules divided by moles. That's all that means. So kilojoules would be the point, or the negative 0.953 uh, 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 kilojoules here, and the moles we calculated to be 0 0.0150 moles. When you divide that, it's negative 63.5 kilojoules Per mole. And so what that means is if we have this net ionic equation that we talked about here a few minutes ago, you know, 
the delta H of this is negative, I don't have much room, that's why I'm leaving some things off, but negative 63.5 kilojoules per mole. Okay, we have actually calculated the delta H of this reaction experimentally, which is pretty neat when you think about it. I hope you have seen how this works. It's uh, fairly beautiful in how simple it is and how we can do this in a, a very simple setup in a chemistry lab, but it's also pretty neat to see how we can calculate this as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned some chemistry. hope you learned about thermochemistry. And if you've gotten to this point, if you have endured all of these videos up to this point with thermodynamics, at this point you know how to calculate delta H four different ways. We've learned about uh, bond enthalpies. We've learned about uh, using enthalpies of formation, you know, products minus reactants. We've learned Hess's law. And we've learned calorimetry. So now you should be an expert in calculating delta H. Hope you have enjoyed these videos and learned something. If you have, please uh, be so kind as to give me a thumbs up if you would. I hope to see you again on my channel. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for over 20 years, and I want you to get an A in your chemistry class and a 5 on the AP exam if that's what you want to do. So join me again where we can learn some